It's the story of the butch counterculture in late 80s, early 90s, particularly set in London. It's a memoir, so it's detailing the lives in particular of four butch women, all of whom have passed on now. So it's a kind of honouring both of their, their real lives and the imagined lives, if you like, of the butches. And it also is a way of looking at the specific issues that affect butch women globally. So it looks at, you know, the situation in Chechnya, what's happening to lesbians there, how they're unable to escape because they're female. It looks at um, very personal um, incidents of violence. It looks at laws, the Article 3 law, which turned out not to be a law at all, which is that we were publicly stripped. And if we weren't wearing three articles of female clothing, then you were arrested. And it's only very recently that we found out it wasn't even a law, but it was quite um, a real thing in the 40s to the 60s. And it looks at various other things like um, how we wore black triangles during the Second World War in Germany to signify that we were antisocial. But really at the heart of it, it's a very personal story of, of community, celebration and grief. The genesis of Kanto and other poems is really unusual. I was commissioned to write a piece, a 12 minute spoken word piece by Apples and Snakes, looking at the theme of protest to take part in this huge show that we're doing called Rally and Cry. Um, and so I was away at the time on tour and it just something hit me. I started thinking about my friends. And I started feeling angry about the way we're constantly misrepresented or not represented at all anywhere. We cannot find ourselves anywhere. And so I, I wrote the initial series of cantos, which was really very much about me. Um, I performed that, and I performed it several times in different spaces, and uh, then a publisher approached me and said, tell me more about this story. Can you tell me more about what happened? And so I went into that. Um, very sort of, it's a magical space. That's why I wanted vitrines, because it's everything preserved behind glass the sense that we can almost touch it. Um, and that's, I guess, the best years of our lives are, are released again. All the ghosts come home. 100% a sense of catharsis. And often I'm asked by people if you're doing, you know, if you're looking at very dark things or you're looking at very upsetting, disturbing things, isn't that, doesn't that really affect you? It's like, well, no, because I carry this in me anyway. The moment when the pen starts speaking, is the moment this liberation happens and freedom and safety. So it's a gift to myself to write it all down. A real gift to myself because I can see them. I can see my friends again so clearly. But it's also a gift to other lesbians and butch women, particularly during this time when homophobia um, is at a high. It's never been as high since the 80s. Six gay men have been murdered over the last couple of months. Um, and there is a sense that we need to come together again. So the gift is a reminder that we can come together. We can reclaim these spaces. 254 of our spaces in London alone have closed. There is only one lesbian bar left in London. And that might seem to other people as kind of not very important, but these were where we belonged and where we knew one another, where we were handsome, you know? There's a sense of exile. When we used to come out, the operative word is out, get out, you know. Um, and so London at that time was kind of a migration of lesbians and gay men. We'd all meet together and you'd be ugly and unwanted and then open a door and be handsome. And there's something really precious about that. And the numinous of space, the magic of space itself. Brilliant. Um how interested are you in what other people make of what you give them? I'm very interested in it. I've had a huge response to the book so far. Um, a lot of personal messages on social media, a lot of emails. Um, there's quite a lot of direct contact. Um, so I had a launch and it's the first time I've seen so many butch women in one space, you know, for a poetry book. Um, yeah, it's, it's had a phenomenal response, and I'm hoping to open the Maryville Bar for real. So in November, um, the original producers of 
rallying cry, the first set of cantos, um, are turning this into a stage show. So the four butchers are coming back to life. I'm going to be one of them. And it's all going to be set inside a snow globe, a bar in a snow globe. Um, and at the end of each night, we'll open it. And the audience, you know, there won't be any entry rules. You literally just walk in, sit down and behave. Because the butchers will keep you um, in order. <laughs> okay, and one, one final thing is, how does it feel to be on, the, on, the, on, on this list in this year? It's just... Sorry, just a minute. It's an overwhelming feeling. And it goes back to that feeling of belonging I was talking about earlier. Because people like us, we don't get things like this. And it's, um, it's a really magnificent thing. It's a really important moment for me and for people like me, for women like me. So I'm very grateful to the judges and to the T.S. Elliott Prize for making it possible.